On the 29th of April, 1981, a man by the name of Dr. Maurice Stamets, who was 84 years old at the time, vanished in Colorado's Pike National Forest, near the area known as Devil's Head Peak. Unfortunately, there is a total lack of information in regards to Devil's Head Peak, despite its somewhat creepy name. You'd think that there might be some kind of history there, but all I can really find is an extract from Wikipedia that states that the name comes from prospectors of the 1800s. Apparently, from the southwest of Devil's Head and looking northeast towards the mountain, there is a shape of a face laying flat as if the mountain was looking up. Some of the forest is supposed to have softened the looks over the years and there used to be a more obvious eye socket and facial features. Though honestly, I can't see any of that in the only example image I could find. Maurice had a PhD in theology and had published many articles on the subject before becoming a pastor later on in life of a Presbyterian church in Littleton, Colorado. He was also the head and dean of Rockmont College in Northern Colorado. By all accounts, Maurice was an intelligent, successful and a very friendly individual. He and his family were said to have had a lot of friends all around the place they lived. On the day that Maurice disappeared, he was with a close family friend, though a name wasn't given in any of the original articles I could find about this. This companion was stated as being younger than Maurice, but again, I couldn't find specifics in terms of his age. At this time of his life, Maurice wasn't particularly in good health anymore, which is to be expected at his age. Some sources stated that he had bad legs, though based on what I can find online, I'm led to believe that he had problems with his knee specifically, and he was considered disabled. At this point in time, it was said that he wasn't really able to get around without assistance, but thankfully, he and his family were well liked and they had a lot of friends. So Maurice was still able to get out and about doing the things he loved with people he liked. It was also stated that Maurice had a blood disorder, which was another factor of his disability. While again, I couldn't find specifics, I believe that this is also something that required him to have assistance and prevented him from being able to travel very far on his own. Maurice always held a major interest in geology, so both he and his companion were topaz hunting that day as they so often did but this time would be different in a way that quickly became very difficult to explain. As shown here, the pair of them arrived at Topaz Point at 10am in the morning. The companion parked the car on the roadside and they walked between 50 and 200 yards from the road based on the article you're reading. And they walked until they found a couple of spots that they wanted to dig. They separated so they weren't getting beneath each other's feet though each pit was said to be very close together, to the point that they were still able to communicate with raised voices. They each had their own back with some gardening tools to help them dig, and I believe they did find some topaz at this location before stopping after two hours. At this point, which was said to be around 12pm, they got together, chatted and had dinner in one of the pits, Maurice's, I believe. After relaxing with this makeshift picnic for around an hour, they decided to get back to it but wanted to dig at a new spot. They then followed the same procedure, walked for between 50 and 200 yards away from the road and found two spots that I believe this time were a little further away from one another. I believe it was further away because each of them dug for around an hour and a half before the companion came to check up on Maurice, which took place at around 2.30pm or so. I believe that he then told Maurice that it was about time they left and that it was time to bag up their topaz. The partner left for a few minutes, though some say this was 15 minutes, finished up, put his things together and then carried them back to Maurice's pit, only this time to find Maurice wasn't there. The search for an 84 year old man reported missing in the Pike National Forest near Devil's Head Peak resumed at dawn today with the aid of a Fort Carson helicopter. Dr. Maurice Darmitz of Boulder County was reported missing about 3.30pm Wednesday, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office said. 
Darmet was last known to be in the area of rock hunting with a younger companion, a spokesman said. On Thursday, six members of the El Peso County Search and Rescue Team joined the search, which was centered in an area of rough terrain about three miles south of Devil's Head. Ron Holliday, president of the local team, said about 80 volunteers scoured the area Thursday trying to locate the man. Darmet and his friend were separated for a few minutes and the friend could not relocate Darmet, Holliday said. Darmet is known to complain of chest pains when he walks for extended periods of time and was wearing only light clothing. You'll notice in this original article from the time Maurice disappeared, it said that they were separated for a few minutes. Other, more recent articles say this time was 15 minutes, so I'm not sure what to think there. Anyway, this article was interesting and a slight contradiction because this article didn't mention anything about Maurice's legs or a blood disorder, stating that Maurice's problem stemmed from chest pains after walking for extended periods. The insinuation perhaps being that Maurice could in fact walk these longer distances though it would cause him great discomfort to do so. The friend on the other hand was said to be confused and didn't really understand what had happened because he didn't think that Maurice could have made it back up to the car without his help. The indications pointed to the idea that Maurice had cleared up in the pit because you could see where he'd been sitting and he'd rebagged his gardening tools because they were also not present anymore. The partner went back up to the car thinking that Maurice must have headed towards it without him noticing but he wasn't there. He then travelled back down to the pit and began calling for Maurice into the forest but there was no response. He said that there was nothing present to indicate that something bad had happened in terms of animal predation which was ruled out very quickly. The reason that was ruled out almost from the get go was because frankly and without being too descriptive it is very obvious and very messy. In addition to that, the companion would likely have heard that go down. I get the impression that he wasn't really sure about how to proceed from here, so he went back up to the car and began honking the horn, presumably thinking that Maurice must have walked off the wrong way. Again, there was no response and he spent the next 40 minutes walking up and down the road into the tree line and back to the pit Maurice was digging, but there was just nothing. He didn't see or hear Maurice or anything out of the ordinary. He also hadn't heard or seen any of the cars or anyone else present. After 40 minutes of searching, finally another car did pass and he was able to flag it down and now local law enforcement were made aware of what had gone down. A deputy arrived and searched for a short time with him, but they basically repeated what had already been tried and then the authorities called for professional search and rescue teams. This search began the same day that Maurice disappeared and grew throughout its duration. About 200 searchers failed to locate an 84 year old man lost in the Pike National Forest near Devil's Head Peak. The search for Dr. Maurice Darmitz of Longmont was called off at dark and was scheduled to resume at dawn today. He has been missing since Wednesday afternoon. He was reported to be in the area rock hunting with a companion, but could not be located after the two were separated for a few minutes. Again, a few minutes, I'm not sure where 15 minutes came from. Anyway, these snippets from the papers were interesting because I believe that search dogs arrived at the scene on the night of the date that Marisa disappeared, but they weren't able to find a scent leading away from the pit. Again, there was no indication of animal predation to be found anywhere. The ground wasn't disturbed and it didn't appear that Maurice had been dragged away or anything like that. Meaning, it appears though the authorities didn't believe that foul play had occurred at the site either. Over 200 people searched for five days at this location and never uncovered a single clue as to Maurice's whereabouts. Only that they could see where he'd been digging. On the fifth day, search leaders said that they'd exhausted everything they could do and they just couldn't find him and ended the search on that basis. Searchers failed to locate an 84 year old Longman man missing near Devil's Head Peak. The search was called off at dark and was scheduled to resume at dawn today. 
Search and rescue teams suspended their search Sunday for Maurice, pending further clues, said search coordinator Tom Fior. That means that if someone comes up with something, we will go back in. Or in other words, Anna said they really had exhausted everything they could think to do and everywhere they thought to search. I can only imagine that after the dogs failed to reveal a trace of where he might have gone, things became confusing and difficult almost immediately. Now, two days after the search came to a close, I found this headline. Because there was absolutely no trace of him, Maurice's family started to think that something seriously out of the ordinary had taken place here. From their perspective, I suppose you can see why. They were a deeply religious family, and Maurice had vanished quite literally without a trace. When the dogs couldn't find a scent, it was almost like he was pulled from the face of the earth, right from his topaz pit. Let's have a look at some extracts from this article. The family of Reverend Maurice Darmitz turned to the Bible Tuesday and said they found the solution to his disappearance. Martha Newman, Maurice's daughter, read the quote, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. The verse refers to an incident in which a descendant was taken into heaven. Darmit's family believes that's what happened to Maurice, who was rock hunting when he disappeared without a trace. My father certainly walked with God, said Mrs. Newman. I really believe the Lord took him home to be with him. I can't imagine him being hurt in any way. He couldn't have disappeared that fast into nowhere. I have perfect peace about it. I don't believe he's suffering someplace. If I did, I wouldn't be able to stand it. Myrtle Darmitz, the minister's wife of 51 years said, They can't find a trace of him. I know he wouldn't get lost. He knows that place, every inch of it. A five-day search for Darmitz was called off Sunday and the investigation was turned over to the Douglas County Sheriff's Department. Authorities are looking into the possibility that the man may have been taken, but Darmitz's family doesn't agree. Had he been hurt in the forest, they said, it would have been found by some of the many dogs used in the search. They said that had he been taken, they would have received a message or ransom demand by now. Mrs. Darmitz said that when her husband went out rock hunting last week, he was wearing old bib overalls and a white cap. No one would think he was from a rich family. Maybe someday I'll see him come through the door again if he's still on earth. While Darmit's wife and daughter say they have found the answer to his disappearance, Beckman is not so sure. He said there's no recognition in church history of that happening in the last couple thousand years. Well, that's certainly a lot to get into. I do agree with the family that the circumstances of this disappearance are very unusual, but they lose me immediately with their conclusion though and they seem to change their mind on that later, which we'll get to in a moment. Some things to take from that though, are firstly, it's interesting that Maurice apparently knew this area quite well. I didn't know that up until now, but it seems, based on what was said, that he'd been going to this place for a long time. Secondly, of particular interest, is the fact that despite the lack of evidence of him being taken by a third party, the authorities began to potentially suspect some kind of foul play in relation to the disappearance. I find this very interesting because there were no signs of that at the scene and yet they were suspecting it anywhere, at least privately. There was no evidence of him being dragged or otherwise forcibly removed from the area and there was nothing present to suggest an attack had taken place. So what was law enforcement proposing exactly? Based on what we've read so far, I'm now not completely confident in saying that Maurice wouldn't have been able to walk from the area. Perhaps at a slow pace, could a third party have made him walk from the area with them? I feel that the dogs would have found a scent trail if that had taken place. The companion said that he hadn't heard or seen any cars at all up until he'd searched for Maurice for around 40 minutes already, so it doesn't seem like Maurice had been driven out of the area. So, what exactly was the suggestion then? Instead, could the suggestion be that he may have been carried out of the area? 
that feels like quite an odd suggestion. And what would the motive even be for doing so? Also, that sounds like a particularly challenging task in such rugged, hilly and uneven terrain. I do understand the thought process as to why the authorities might have started to lean in the direction of him being taken. You search for five days, you bring in over 200 searchers with dogs present for the entire duration. You can see where he'd been digging, but you can't find a scent there or anywhere else that is pretty strange. The authorities did practically tell the family that if Maurice had been hurt in the forest and therefore still inside the forest, the dogs would have led them straight to him, but of course that didn't happen. Thus, I can only assume was the reason they perhaps began to conclude or speculate that he just simply wasn't in the area anymore. But how, why, when, and in what manner exactly could this have happened? The companion did leave Maurice alone for a few minutes was the quote, or 15 I guess, I don't know, while they both packed away. But I don't believe that he was so far away that he wouldn't have heard him screaming, shouting, or otherwise calling out for help. It also appears that whatever happened to Maurice in that moment didn't happen right away because as said earlier, it appeared that Maurice had packed away his garden tools first as they were also missing. In that article, law enforcement did also contradict themselves slightly in suggesting that if he'd been taken by a third party, they should have received some ransom demands by now because otherwise I suppose they were struggling to come up with a motive. It seems to me that it's inherently a little more complicated than that anyway because I'm not sure how he could have been moved from the area in a way that wouldn't leave a trace or any kind of scent behind. Okay, now, Maurice vanished on the 29th of April that year. Around two and a half months later, on the 18th of July 1981, Maurice's wife sent this to Richard Lamb, who was the governor of Colorado at that time. Dear Governor Lamb, on April 29, 1981, my husband, Reverend Maurice Darmes, age 84, and a close friend of ours, were rock hunting in the Devil's Head area of Pike National Forest when they became separated and my husband apparently became lost. There was an extensive five-day search conducted which resulted in no clues as to his whereabouts, and as of this date, he is still missing with no new information. Many notices of his disappearance with pictures, description, and reward offer for information leading to finding him were posted throughout the region, but they have brought no results whatsoever. Relatives, friends, his hunting partner, my daughter and I have been in contact with the Sheriff Department of Douglas County, and we have talked with Stan Bush and Tom Fior, search leaders. We feel the Sheriff Department does not have the time or resources to do a more intensive investigation than they have already done. Since the search was very thorough, we must consider that while separated from his partner, Maurice might have been met with foul play or have been carried out of the area. Therefore, I am writing to you asking you to appoint some government agency or department to do something on our behalf. We feel that perhaps there is some agency or department that we are unaware of that could make a more extensive investigation. Any assistance you will be able to give us will be deeply appreciated by myself, my family, and our many, many friends. Anxiously awaiting your reply, I am. That help, sadly, would never arrive. She did receive a response from the governor, but it basically stated that no such help was coming. Now, as for Myrtle's letter, it is interesting for a number of reasons. Firstly, as mentioned earlier, it seems that Myrtle and perhaps the rest of the family left their initial, perhaps over-the-top hypothesis behind and started to think that Maurice might have been met with foul play in the forest instead, presumably within the X minutes time span that his friend had left them each to pack. Secondly, very specifically, she mentions the idea and questions as to whether Maurice might have been carried out of the area. This suggests that she doesn't believe that he could have walked so far away and to evade the 200 searchers and dogs that were involved in the search effort. It also lends itself to the idea that Maurice may in fact have had bad legs or knees, or perhaps his heart condition or whatever condition he had 
was particularly debilitating, to the point again, getting so far away was not likely at all. I don't even remotely know where to begin with the suggestion that he could have been carried out of the area. By who exactly? That would have to be someone extremely strong to the point of ridiculousness. I say that on the basis that the friend hadn't seen or heard any other vehicles around. So I can't imagine that he could have been carried away far enough to avoid the level of searching that took place there. It seems for that to make sense, a vehicle would have had to have been present for him to be driven away instead. I don't usually do this, but I thought that I'd scan around to see what suggestions people may have had in relation to this disappearance. I've reworded the following a bit just to get to the gist of what was being said. Could he have believed that his time was near and decided to walk into nature to purposefully pass away on his own terms? He might have decided against wanting to spend his last years confined to a bed or wheelchair. It might not even have been planned, perhaps a spare of the moment decision. I personally can't really get on board with that suggestion because based on what we've heard, it seems that Maurice shouldn't have been able to get too far away based on the conditions he had. I lean towards the idea that he would have been found in that scenario. Could he have fallen and received an injury, perhaps to his head? Maybe he wasn't able to respond. I can't imagine someone taking him and disappearing because that makes even less sense. How could someone whisk him away so quickly, taking all his equipment and leaving no signs behind? I'd defer to my previous response again. In that scenario, I feel that he would have been found with over 200 searchers and dog teams in the forest. I agree with the second part of that statement. I feel that a vehicle would have had to have been present in order for him to have been taken so thoroughly away from the area. This next one is interesting, and perhaps might be something many people have potentially suspected over the years. Though I could find no evidence to suggest the family thought this next one. The only scenario that comes to mind is that maybe his topaz partner did something to him and then removed the body. Maybe it was on the same day he disappeared, or maybe earlier. I can certainly see why people could lean in that direction, but that quickly delves into quite personal accusations without any evidence, and a motive is also not clear. As said, it seems that the family wasn't on board with that idea. And I don't have any evidence of this based on the articles, but I'm almost certain that law enforcement would have sat down with his partner and questioned him thoroughly. Based on the fact that he wasn't arrested, I can only assume that they didn't have any evidence of this scenario. When this quote was issued in one of the articles, authorities are looking into the possibility that the man may have been taken, but Darmit's family doesn't agree. I wonder if they, in that moment, were referring to the partner that was never made clear. I could only find this quote in relation to the partner. The companion states that he last saw Mr. Darmitz at the Topaz mine area located 200 yards or so from the picnic area along a steep, roughly forested hill. The companion had accompanied Mr. Darmitz to the Topaz mine because they were acquaintances who often engaged in this activity together. They enjoyed surface mining for Topaz in an area very rich with that mineral. Mr. Darmitz was elderly and frail but with the help of his companion, he could manage the 200 yards to the surface mine, as long as he contoured around the very steep hill. This is reportedly what he did. Just finally, I did find this discrepancy, though I suppose it doesn't really change much. On Colorado's Missing Person Gov website, Maurice's age is stated as being 75 on his disappearance, whereas Maurice's wife and all of the articles relayed 84. Perhaps that's just a mistake on the site, I don't know. I found this quote by a commenter that sums up my thoughts too. I have to be honest, this is one of those disappearances where I genuinely don't know. It's perplexing. I've pretty much exhausted all of the material that I could find in relation to Maurice, so it seems that now would be a good time to hand it over to you in the comments below. I'd just like to take the time to thank you for watching and a big thank you to the patrons who've been running around on the screen. If you found the video interesting, then please do leave a like, hit the bell, and subscribe if you haven't already, it helps me a lot. 
If not, then feel free to leave a dislike. I'm just looking for your honest opinion either way. I hope that you've had a great day or evening, depending on where you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Be safe, guys. Peace.